Hey everybody, this is Petey from the Spinner Rack. If you watch my Art of the Matrix book, I hadn't planned to do that, but it made more sense to do that than what I was originally planning. So since I'm still around, I decided why not do the my next part, which would take one of the key artists since you looked at the Art of the Matrix book and look at Steve Scrooge and what he did on Spider-Man. That wasn't a long run. It wasn't, uh, you know, like one issue at the other. I think he had some fill-ins. I'm not sure that I have all of the ones he did here, but I have four of them. This was, I believe, written by Tom DeFalco. We'll be able to see in a second. This short period where he was writing, so he was drawing Spider-Man. Now, he worked on Ecto Kid with the Wachowskis when they were brothers. And uh, who else? Um... Then he worked on Cable. Then after that, he worked on X-Men. Then he did Spider-Man. He went on to do an X-Men issue, which led him to Gambit, which would be really him doing the full extent of his powers. Then he did Wolverine, Blood Debt, and then we got The Matrix. And I think that's the order of operations, right? And then now he does, I think he got a book Maestro out there. He did uh, On Guard for Thee. That was a really good book. And I think he has something else out now, which I'm not sure of the name. But let's stick with this Spider-Man stuff, right? I'll give you enough intro. The bite of the black tarantula is always fatal, right? So his artwork, even though it's heavily stylized, kind of, um, ooh, sorry. Let's move the matrix out for now. And let's open wide. A little off. So we have these villains. We have Fortunato. We had the Rose, Hammerhead, and then of course we have um, the Black Tarantula, who we cannot see. Right, and his art is very clean. Very easy to understand. I mean, there is a little clutter in some of his artwork, but it don't matter because it's so cool. And it's like, like each page is a poster in and of itself. It's cool when you have someone that can do poster type stuff, but at the same time, he's a good storyteller. So he does some great Spider-Man shots, but we can pretty much gather what's going on here, right? That spider man sort of following these guys. And they're kind of, you know, it's all developing the story. But we can keep following. So as he follows them, he gets involved. And then um, we get to see some cool Spider-Man scenes. things we've never seen him do use his feet to grab something and then capture a villain with it right then of course you know peter parker scene and um talk to robbie robertson there's a little bit too much stuff connected to the mutants but you know Delilah. Then we have um, Mary Jane, who's not looking very much like Mary Jane. It's a classic Scrouse babe, but who cares? Mary Jane Watson, her aunt. Right? Peter goes home to Queens. And, like, look. We're ultimately... He just does everything good. He's, uh, you know, very stylized, but we get some nice Peter Parker scenes. And then we get some night Morris, Mort Meskin type of Spider-Man scenes, a multi-image shot. 
we don't know who that is some point later we'll do it I'll drag you guys down the rabbit hole of um, Mort Meskin's work but um let's keep going so I got three other issues to do now I'm only five minutes in let's move on Spider-Man meeting, I think it's Ben Urich. Ultimately, if you owned any of these pages, even the mundane ones, this will be worth it. But there's some more Mort Meskin type stuff here. Like, wouldn't you love to have that on your wall? So the deal for the Black Trench is going down there and Spider-Man shows up before these guys die. So we're going to jump ahead from that to Spider-Man meeting Dragonfly or Enter Dragonfly. All right, so we got Peter Parker. I think um, Tom DeFalco really lucked out. So you're working with um, Ron Friends and then C. Scrooge. So it's a great period for Marvel because Spider-Man is the most popular character. DeFalco is a, uh, you know, pretty, you know, he's an okay Spider-Man writer. I only say okay because Spider-Man never really gets hit that much. So, um, and at times he could take out people like um, exponentially stronger than him, which makes no sense to me. But... Otherwise, he's pretty good. And, um, that's why I ultimately like these, this book more for the art, right? Spider-Man just mowing through all this stuff without even breaking a sweat. But we'll get to some of that later. Spider-Man Scrooge does a great scene of Spider-Man making someone hit themselves. But back in the day, Spider-Man would have a tough time with ninjas because they work with speed. And... And skill. So... Spider-Man speeds now turn into like flash-like speed. Oh, they lucked out. They got a backup story by Jeff Urshwood. This guy might have been one of the Neil Adams guys that worked on in continuity. Bob Harris in the X-Men outfit with the thong. There you go. Now this is your double-sized issue. So this book here, you can tell that I've read it a number of times. This is the cover, let's see. Large cover, you got Electro over here. You got um, X Men, which is Nate Gray, and you got my fingerprint here because I read this comic book so many times. 
Actually, so I'm not reading it again. Or here's Spider-Man just taking out some local thugs. And then we got the another great multiple shots of Spider-Man page. Alright. Electro doing some cool stuff here. Regretfully, someone decided that the mask didn't work. Comic craft right here going a little nuts on the dialogue. That's a little too nuts for me. Everything else works and it's nice synergy. There's a little bit of clutter here, but ultimately don't matter. It's just too gorgeous to 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 worry about. And you can kind of tell what's going on. Nice storytelling here, going home, gets busted, still in the Spider-Man outfit. Mary Jane's upset. Well, Mary Jane ultimately was a person that really nothing bothered her. So trying to turn her into a regular girl is kind of um, defeats the purpose. Hence why they never wanted to marry her off. And we have a Robbie Robertson scene. Look at the Electro. He's cool now. He's got an earring. He doesn't like wearing a mask. People didn't like when John Byrne trains the outfit up, but at the same time, what does it matter? He's not even wearing the mask anymore, right? Nobody complained. He's setting up his, his webbing so he can deal with Electro. Electro is terrible. Electrifying the rat. Trying to have the same Aunt May scenes with um with um Mary Jane's aunt. And then this thing, if they could somehow translate what he was doing as far as a um As far as web slinging, there's Delilah and the Rose again, bowling. And here's X-Men right here. Not really a big Little Daily Bugle scene. Spider-Man has another outfit. This one is protect him against Electro. Right? Nate is of course stunned and then Spider-Man of course comes around to save the day somehow he always looks out. Things work here. He's all luckier than long shot. And this is what I have a problem with. Basically he's shooting lightning and Spider-Man is faster than it. It's taking all my it's taking all my speed, all my agility to stay ahead of this electrical barrage. Can't keep up the pace much longer. Yeah, right. Here, overdoing it with the with the lettering. Spider-Man finally ready. He's not grounded. Tags him. Doesn't work out. And then some of his protective costume is being.
So Electro's hearing voices in the head that kind of slows Spider-Man down. And um, I think I always thought Spider-Man should um, initially get off the ground by doing this. Tie his webs around, pull, pull back, and then spring forward. But of course, it's one of those things. And this other problem with Spider-Man, at the end of the day, he just starts punching people, like, really and relentlessly punching them. Notice how Spider-Man didn't get hit in it? No, he got hit once. He got hit once because he was standing around. And I should have the next one after this one, but... This is the, that's what I remember, the Otto Octavius coming back. But I don't have that. But then he has a bad dream. We have this classic Ditko scene. And that's what he kind of, um, this sort of thin Spider-Man sort of suggests a, um, a Ditko Spider-Man. I think this chick here, she goes through the shallow hell treatment and she becomes a babe some point later. Can't remember. Yep, yeah, she became a babe. Her name goes by Stunner. I call that one out. Spider-Man comes in here, of course, doesn't get touched. Most of the ninjas. I guess I have to find the return of Otto Octavius. Because I think this is also something that... Um, Dan Slott didn't check out that he had already come back from the dead. So to do this thing where he um, has all this head trauma of being hit in the head all the time really made no sense. But I'm pretty sure Steve Scrooge did that issue. All right? And at the same time, the Spider Man's still rolling. We have Heroes. Oh, here's Return. That's what's going on here. So this is after his Heroes Reborn. All right. So I think that's it. Thank you guys for watching this. And I hope you watched the Matrix video. That was a fun one to do. I hadn't looked at that book in a long time, but I have it on the shelf. Admiring it. That's like I did something cool. But anyway, Spinarak out.